Hey guys, it's Matt. If you're driving or just listening, you don't have to see this. There's not going to be that many images. It's better if you can see it, but I'll describe it if you can't. Um, this is very interesting and is a great bridge between what I'm going to talk about, or, or actually the comment section today is more important than this presentation. If you could hold off on commenting, uh, that would be great. And I'm really going to work to clean up comments. This is about the comment section in terms of your craziest, most wildest explanation or theory as to what happened to reality. I'll tell you some of my crazy theories. Of course, I don't put all my chips on one number. I mean, a few different things may have happened. But if you could hold off um, on the comments and anything not totally not related, I, I am going to remove. I, again, I, I don't want you to spend a lot of time and get upset at me. I'm being real honest. I'm going to remove non-related comments. The comment section is too important here. So what are we looking at here if you're just listening and can't see it? And what's the backstory? Okay, my presentation on Saturday, hopefully you heard it, was on stalled century. If you didn't hear it, just throw a dart. In every single facet of society and culture, nothing is progressive, progressing. Everything is stagnant other than tech and smart devices and where they want to move the human, quote, human being down into the realm of digital zeros and ones. Everything else is completely stalled out. It's unnatural and it's artificial. So Dave from Australia, who's given me a lot of interesting stuff over the years, he emails me saying, go to Google and just type in stalled century and see what comes up as number one. So I did it. You go to Google, you put installed century, and you get this, um, it's like a, it's a, I don't know what it is. It's a, it's actually, it's an NFT, a non-fungible token. If you're just listening, it's like a painting or a poster, but it's put together with digital images. And actually at the bottom, you can play it. And each TV shows different things. And there's, I, honestly, to me, what comes up on the TV is like nonsense. Just, you're not missing much if you don't play it through. Some music and um, different uh, conspiracy slogans on the back, and there's a front candy deduction, there's a clown in front. So the point of all this is, first of all, I'm fascinated with this whole notion of non-fungible tokens. Somebody can sell this for $1,000. I'll show you. Somebody sold it for $1,000. And then, of course, anybody can just recreate it, but you have the non-fungible token saying you, you own the original. But anybody else in the world can just take it and get it, and they have the same thing. But you own the certificate of authenticity. It's, it is weird. Anyway, the whole point of the bridge between this and the video on Saturday about Stalled Century related to this video where I'm asking for your comments is even like this artist. Look at the description. We were pulled, okay, it's called Stalled Century. And I'll show you the, um, the I forget the name of the website right now where it is. If you want to take a look, I'll provide it in the comments. Um, description. We were pulled into a false reality a dimensional mirror that only filters and reflects based on personal bias through the projection of a shadow mind. I went, what? What? I'm like, this guy, okay, this guy thinks like we do. But is this just, is everybody starting to think outside the box? Because things are just so strange. I know he's got the InfoWars box, and obviously this person is not unfamiliar with conspiracy. But this is where I want to go in this video. Even this artist that comes up with a non-fungible token, we were pulled into a false reality, a dimensional mirror that only filters and reflects based on personal bias through the projection of a shadow mind. So I want to talk about the different scenarios that might have happened to reality itself to create this, this situation that is just more mind-boggling than anybody could have possibly imagined. But then if you could, hold, again, hold off in your comments... And just, you know, and I'm not asking you to, to, to really say what happened or what, I'm not almost asking you to come up to say, what's the craziest thing that possibly could have happened that you believe is still on the table? So I guess that's a better way of putting it. What's the craziest possibility that you still keep on the table, even if it's even not your primary explanation as to what happened to reality? Because I get the feeling one of the crazy explanations is going to be cl close to the truth. Um, the explanations that neatly fit in between the reality bookends, they don't work anymore. Okay, let me present one of my way out theories. And again, if, the, if your comment can be about your way out theory, that'd be great. Um, and there was a comment under a video, maybe it was under the Stalled Century video, that kind of spurred me on into making this presentation. I've been thinking about this for a while. But 
I saw the comment and I believe in the synchronicities and two monkeys becomes a hundred monkeys. And I'm like, this is, there's something to this. I need to, to talk about this and just be honest about what I've been playing around with. The comment was, yeah, Matt, I'll explain. I forget what it was. It was like, yeah, we're in the Bardos. We're this, what, we're, what seems to be reality is not. Like this, you d- died. We all died. It's that same thing. The tree fell on me. But whether, you know, let's just keep it, I was going to say keep it simple. Is that even, that doesn't make any sense in terms of the crazy stuff that's being presented. But the base level, um, I've kicked it around for a while. He said, we're in the Bardos. Now, what the heck is that? Let me back up. The Tibetan Book of the Dead, of which I'm no expert, but the, the core principles are pretty simple. The t- Tibetan Buddhism, um, somebody dies, you have 49 days of the journey of the soul, spirit, and mind before another reincarnation into a body. 49 days. And the idea is, of course, almost very few people in Buddhism, or almost nobody, can, during these bardos, break free. Of course, I'm not putting this exactly right. I'm no expert at the Tibetan. I didn't spend those seven years in Tibet. It doesn't matter. These basics are pretty sound. You have 49 days to get through all the illusion. The the, the demons come up and your, your mind is pulled this way and that, and you're lost in illusion. And you have to, you know, you have to get through it if you ever want to get out. And if not, Back into a body, back into a body, back into a body. Well, what I did several thousand of these, it don't matter. Back into a body. That's that's Buddhism. 49 days. Why 49? Why not? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't spend those seven years with Brad Pitt, that little little Dalai Lama who wanted to play with his Tonka trucks. I don't know. But I, I've thought about this and like, wait, we have to, in order to have any clue of understanding what's going on, you have to throw out everything we know. I'm pretty sure of this. Throw out everything we know. So this is life. No, throw out everything. This is between lives where we are, or this is death. Just reverse everything. Throw out everything you know. So it got my attention, that comment, because I'm kicking stuff around like this for a while. Um, yeah, this are we in the, some sort of netherworld? Again, if you're not, well, I'm not Buddhist. It doesn't matter. It's the principles. Remember what that um, non-fungible token said. You know, we were pulled into a stalled century or a netherworld or a, or a dimension off to the side. You died or I died or there was a cataclysm and we're in some sort of bardos, which is a, the, the, the period between um, realities. You could put it that way if you don't want to believe in reincarnation, etc., but Matt, it's not 49 days. Well, I don't know. Maybe they got the number wrong. Maybe it's not 49 days. Maybe it is 49 days, and it just appears to us to be year after year after year after year. How, Howdy McCoskey is like, we're probably in the same year. But all of time is all screwed up. Maybe it is 49 days. Everything's just so off here. It doesn't make sense. And like the little I've never read huge uh, tomes about the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I've watched some YouTube videos and some documentaries, and... The monks, um, sorry if I'm getting that name, they will kind of pray over the body and with the family and friends talk to the body. I don't know how many days they come. I don't know if they come all 49 days, but they basically will talk to the spirit and say, you know, dead spirit, you're in the Bardos right now. You're being presented with false reality. You need to be able to see through the false reality. You're, these, the demons will come, and you'll be scared and succumb to fear. And you, if you don't want to reincarnate back into a body, you've got to, you know, listen to me. Well, it would have been better if the person listened while they were alive. The, the, the monk is talking to the dead body, but that's what they do. They talk over the dead body and say, you can get through this. But... It, when I started investigating this a little bit more, what this one website, this, I don't know what this guy, Andrew Holsick, H-O-L-E-C-E-K, if you can't read it, I'll read it to you. The, the part here about how to get through the Bardos or how to prepare for the Bardos so you can find Nirvana and get out and don't recycle back, it really does apply to what we are doing and what we need to do here. So I'm right back again. I'm like, this This could be the Bardos, man. So let's just go through this and tell me it doesn't apply to what we're doing right now. It's not like how to prepare for the Bardos when we die, how to prepare for right now. Okay, let me read this to you. How to prepare for the Bardos. After you wake up in the Bardo, after death, steady your mind. This is difficult because we have a shifty mental body that darts around at the speed of thought. 
If we think of Paris or think of New York or our home, we're instantly there in the bardos. With a measure of stability, we can apply our meditations and attain liberation. This is why meditation is such a powerful preparation for death. The momentum of practicing meditation will automatically kick in during the bardos and take care of us. By practicing now, we are using the power of karma or habit in a constructive way. Other suggestions from the Tibetan teachings are below. One, perceive everything in the bardos as sacred and realize it's all part, it's all the play of your mind, okay? Perceive everything in the bardos as sacred and realize it's all the play of your mind. Don't grasp or struggle. Open, be open to whatever arises and become one with it. Relax into the innate purity and goodness of wherever you are or whatever you see. Two, calm and stabilize your mind. Remember any form of spiritual support, be it a teacher, a divine presence, or a positive experience. Remember from your past any form of spiritual support you can call on, a teacher, divine presence, or positive experience. Keep your mind on this support without distractions. Rely on the confidence you have developed with your meditations. It is said that the confidence actually becomes your body in the bardos, a body you have strengthened with the exercise of meditation. Remember everything in, in remember that everything is exaggerated in the bardo. Ha! Ah, this means that hesitation, the opposite of confidence, can flap you around like a flag in the wind. Number three, don't be angry or afraid. See everything as illusory, like a dream. Towards the bottom of number two really got my attention. It says, starts with remember. Remember that everything is exaggerated in the bardo. This means that hesitation, the opposite of confidence, can flap you around like a flag in the wing. Everything is exaggerated. Remember, when these um, uh, monks are, um, again, I'm sorry, I, I should have, uh, uh, priests, bonzes, I don't know what they are. If they, when they're over the body, they're trying to convince the body and reach the, the spirit that what you are experiencing is, a, is an illusion, the demons that come up, all the com complex confusion, the, the priests or the bonzes or whatever over over these the, over the dead body, saying you, that you don't fall for the illusion, don't fall for the illusion, and they of course hopefully the person will remember that as they hopefully were in you know they were in spiritual practice in their when they were quote alive, and I mean but that is our biggest issue. You know, don't fall for the illusion. Don't take its bait. Remember, it says, remember that everything is exaggerated in the bardo. I mean, you want it exaggerated. Everything that, if that, let's just say that that is, this person it is an absolute accurate statement, 100%, then that is the best evidence I've ever seen that we're in the bardo. That is one of the defining characteristics of this false reality, everything becoming an exaggeration. A politician, Back in the day, even if you remember Bill Clinton from the early 90s, he was kind of a little bit of a bumbling fool, but it wasn't a big deal. You know, kind of, I always said the last century presented itself more um, uh, professionally, even if it was still just a hybrid of the same false reality. It still put itself forth with more believability, with more professionalism. So now your politicians are just these just these, it's over-exaggeration, like Nancy Pelosi's just an over-exaggerated ghoul, like something you'd find in a Wizard of Oz remake, or a, a Frank Baum book that nobody's read, or, or Biden is just an over-the-top buffoon, Trump was an over-the-top agitator, what, he went beyond what's normal, so it's like, that's, that's the reality doing that, is this the damn Bardos, the, you know, the hip-hop today, or rap just doesn't make any sense. It's, and where it does make sense are rhymes. It's the same thing that it was doing like 20 years ago, like stalled century. And then even there's no good, it's not just hip hop and rap, there's no good rock and roll. And it, it just relate, it does relate back to stalled century. Stalled century to a degree is, um, it is like an exaggeration. Um, it's exaggerated out where everything gets worse, but tries to mimic you know, what once was. The, the new Star Wars, it's easy for us to say that it was made bad um, on purpose for various different reasons, but if we are in, like, the um, stalled century non-fungible token, we're pulled into some side reality, or we're in some sort of bardo, 
the, the last three Star Wars are going to be bad because it will be a reflection of the reality itself that we've been pulled into, if you see what I'm saying. I don't even understand really what I just said. I don't expect you to understand that, but it's an exercise in thinking big. Look at the last bit of advice for surviving the bardos or getting through the bardos per the Tibetan Book of the Dead as it's presented here by this website. But then it's funny, this all applies to us. With us? Don't be angry or afraid. See everything as illusory like a dream. I mean, that could not be more applicable to the most important things we need to do here. Don't be angry or afraid, no matter what even your specifics are in terms of what you believe in the quote truth community. Anger, afraid, worry, anxiety puts out a certain frequency that some form of creep feeds on like the louche. So we all agree, don't be angry or afraid. And the truth comes through um, the Star Wars, that when it, when it was good, you know, the, even if you're not believing we're all dead in the Bardos, you could say, well, there was incredible, the way the reality does business, there was incredible truths in the original Star Wars. So the idea is they have to put it out there. It's kind of like the contract rules for the creeps. They have to put out the truth, and then they'll work to destroy the franchise, so then people ignore the first three, and then they won't take the truth out of it, like Yoda in number two. Afraid, are you? <laughs> afraid? You know, don't be afraid or angry. I sense much fear in you. That was bad, but... The cave. Remember your failure at the cave. <laughs> that was better. Um, I don't know what's going to come out sometime when I try to do this shit, or shit. Um, all about fear. Well, wait a Matt, what, so our whole lives could be the Bardos. It might be 49 days, or since since at least that tree killed you, Matt. Well, yeah, we, how would we have any sense of time? Do you think the person in the Bardos... See, as it's described, it's like this whirling chaos of dream and a demon face will come up. How do, how do we know if, if there's truth to this, what the person goes through in the 49 days. It could be completely, the reality could be completely looking real like this. We have no idea. No, it just seems as it's described, a demon will come up and the person will believe it's real. Why would they believe that's real? The only thing they're going to believe it's real is if the dumb reality looks exactly like the old reality, which this one that's a little bit off to the side looks like the old one. And going back to that non-fungible token called, actually called stalled century, this is from the artist we were pulled into a false reality, a dimensional mirror that only filters and reflects based on personal bias through the projection of a shadow mind. Again, I'm no expert, but this is exactly the description of the Bardo's period uh, in, per, per Tibetan Buddhism, the, the netherworld between lives, between the life now and the next life in the reincarnated body. So I, you know, Matt, well, this person is obviously a Tibetan Buddhist. I, I don't know. Not, not necessarily. These themes, we see these themes from smart, creative people, and they all tie together. It doesn't mean they, they abs many times they don't have the same background at all. And I'm not expert enough really to make this comment. To me, that's exactly, he, what he's describing is exactly what is described as these bardos, where will you fall for the illusion or will you, will you be able to focus and get through it? Obviously, according to Buddhism, most people fall for the illusion, because according to Buddhism, um, where they talk about thousands and tens of thousands of lives, yet most people, according to them, don't make it. If you don't make it through the 49 days, of which when you're in the 49 days, does it really seem like 49 days? Probably not, like our reality. Um, and then if you don't make it, you're, oh, sorry, you're back in a body. I'm no expert, but the description of the Bardos, the 49, the netherworld of the 49 days, based on the descriptions, whatever documentaries I've watched, these paintings, uh, multiple demons of uh, deities of the Bardos, uh, demons in your face, swirling chaos, just, well, I'll I tell you what, I, I'm no expert in the, in the design of how to get somebody back into a body, but if I wanted to really fool somebody, I'd make the reality look as close as what they had. So they're still thinking they're on the old reality. So they see if a bunch of demon faces came up, somebody might get their guard up, right? That would kind of make you put, you know, pull the top of a trash can off and pick up a rake and try to defend yourself. But if the reality 
in the Bardos looks just like the other reality and everybody around you convinces you that you crazy if you see little differences, little subtle differences and things are a little off or things are a little shifted like the Mandela effect or what um, John Travolta said. I mean, it all potentially truth drops in the in the Bardos that were coming through movies and stuff. And How is that happening, right? Uh, John Travolta says in Pulp Fiction, what does he say to um, if Samuel L., Loved him as Jules in Pulp Fiction. Hate him in the 4,000 other roles. Like, if we, we can't flip channels without seeing Samuel L. Jackson, I don't, I'm a little tired of him, but that's not the point here. He says, you know what the difference is between Europe? What? That didn't sound like Samuel L. Jackson. It's a little differences. You know, like, in, um, you can go and see a movie in Amsterdam. You can get a glass of beer. And I don't mean no little cup. I mean a full glass of beer. You know what they put on, put, they put on fries in Holland? What? mayonnaise they drown them in that shit Ugh. so you know he you know what does he say you know what the difference is the little differences the subtle little differences politics to us it okay it looks kind of the same but you have these exaggerations also a um, descriptor of of the 49 day bardos the little differences right so if you really wanted to screw somebody and get them so they keep their guard down wouldn't you make the reality as close as possible to what they experience, thinking that they're just continue, they're just in the same reality. They're not, they're not doing what they need to do in quote the Bardos if this is real. But there's some sort of contractual law. It can't be the exact same reality. And have you ever heard this term from me? Reality gives itself away. It, if we're in the Bardos, it has to give itself away. So there's no downside. I'm going to live the rest of my life like I'm in the damn Bardos. Of course, this is the scene from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I found a picture on the right where the the quarter pounder with cheese is presented in the Royale, <laughs> the Royale with cheese. Um, Matt John Travolta is talking about little differences in burgers and beers. He's not talking about the whole reality being a, a shifted off to the side after the 7-Eleven 2001 Space Odyssey event. We're in some sort of Bardos. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. I'm not going to put all my chips there either. But I'm certainly going to keep it on the table. Maybe there is. Um, you know, these keepers of the Bardos, is that what the minions are? The keepers of the Bardos, the demons of the Bardos, to convince you that everything's normal. There's nothing wrong with this reality. And maybe, you know, so maybe there's a version, they, they, because the keepers of the Bardos like their mockery. There might be two versions of this. And all the insiders come into Quentin Tarantino's house for a private showing in the basement and, and Melvin P. And they all come in and they have a whole completely different scene here. And uh, John Travolta says to Samuel Jackson as, as demonic keepers of the Bardos and to keep the people fooled into thinking the reality is completely normal, completely real. It's like, you know what the difference is between this reality where all these dummies are, the Bardos, and the, and the old reality that we took them from after we shifted the whole reality off to the side during 7 11 and 2001 Space Odyssey? You know what the difference in realities are? And he, what? It's the little differences. Like, the Mande little differences like what? Like the Mandela effect where Australia's moved a thousand miles north? That ain't a little difference. Well, you can get a, you can go into a movie theater in Paris, you can get a glass of beer. Maybe there's a whole scene where Quentin Tarantino shows his inside, insider demonic minions, the keepers of the Bardos. I know I'm getting stupid now, guys. But, you know. Because yeah. we're never going to survive, Seal says, unless we get a little crazy. The regular explanations don't work. It's this weird shit. Eventually, we'll come up, we'll hit on it, and they'll say, wait, that's it. That's what's happening, you know, um, whether we're in the Bardos or not. It's the weird uh, way out explanations that are going to be closer than any bullshit that fits in between this reality's uh, demented bookends. Okay, in terms of the comments, my presentation here was too much focused on, hey, maybe Matt died or or the real souls and spirits died, or there was a cataclysm, we're in some sort of 49-day bardo that feels like years, or whatever time does not move the same here. That I was probably too focused on that, um, because I wanted to talk about that, but I, if, if I have other explanations as to what potentially happened, and I'm sure you do too. There are, there are hundreds of other potential explanations. Mostly, I think many of them would relate to whatever that strange thing that happened in 2001, 7 the job application Space Odyssey. Could you imagine if somebody just came across this video? Whatever, that that little thing where they baked the donuts on 2001. You know, there's a lot of smart people that were like, just like the person with the non-fungible token alluded to. Yeah, that, that ritual magic, that it, it took us out of the, off the timeline. 
<laughs> it put it, it inserted all real souls and spirit into some netherworld broom closet reality off to the side. It took us off the original timeline. I mean, there's a whole sort of of, of things I would keep on the table related to 2001 7 11 a space odyssey event i mean no doubt about it i mean what was that what was that for well matt they needed an excuse to take them down because of asbestos oh yeah that's all okay yeah they needed an excuse just to show the two into one uh, well no yeah they love that but <laughs> but i don't know i mean there things were a lot different if you're of a certain age and you remember the century prior that was not stalled and then, so matter, you know, I, again, I'll look at your comments and hopefully we can come up with a hundred different uh, permutations of strange explanations that make sense, more sense than anything that can fit in the bookends. But for any one of these, you can have a ton of fun with it. You know, if anybody wants to just continue and get stupid, the video is basically over. But, you know, the, the dark, certain dark creatures in, in off, off, off in the astral, <laughs> they're not even, they have so much to, so many things to corrupt. They didn't even, they're not even paying attention to the big day in 2001. Like a little George Soros has to run up and knock on the door like, bop, 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 bop. who's there? Oh, it's it's little George. On B He's on the, you're from which reality of Earth, Terran, Terran location, 666? Oh, come on in. Come on. Oh, yes, it was that thing we were going to do today. Did it bring us up to speed, little George? Did it work? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, yeah, it worked. It worked beautifully. We moved the entire reality off to the side into a netherworld and broke them off original timeline. And the, the beautiful thing is, no one noticed. <laughs> Is that maybe George Soros does talk like that behind closed doors? I don't know when he likes to role play with whatever he likes to get jiggy with. I I don't know, but you know, and no one noticed. But there's this group of it's like us in the um, what's the damn um, Scooby Doo um, the mystery mobile. There's these meddling kids. There's these meddling truthers. These real spirits and souls that they can see. They can see through it? Did they need those those rowdy, rowdy piper? Would they live glasses? No, they can see. They're seeing through the ruse. But okay, these little, these meddling kids, can they, can they upset our plans for that reality? We just moved off to the side. We don't think so. We don't think so. We, they're, they're, they're going to be a thorn in our side, but we don't think ultimately they'll have the power to wake up everybody else we're putting into a sleeping coma. Anyway, guys. Sorry to get stupid, but sometimes it's necessary.